Your time is valuable. That's why you need a Hagee STS application system. Hagee STS products are designed for precision and efficiency, allowing you to make applications all season long with just one machine. Contact your Hagee rep today. Our Weed of the Week is Kosha, and not just Kosha, this is Roundup resistant, ALS resistant Kosha. Well, it's funny because when you think about identification of Kosha, uh, I've had a lot of people over the years say, wow, it looks so similar to mare's tail when they're both really small. Yeah. My gauge used to be, well, if I sprayed Roundup and one was alive and one was dead, well, the dead one was Kosha, the alive one was mare's tail because that was Roundup resistant, one of the first weeds that really spread across the country with Roundup resistance. Now the Roundup doesn't kill either of them. And when you think of the differences between those two plants, mare's tail typically has one tall erect stem where kochia bushes out right from the beginning and kochia is very hairy throughout the growth stages. All right, so where we have the biggest problem controlling kochia is in broadleaf crops like soybeans. In soybeans, what we suggest is that you use a three pre-emerge strategy using three products that will kill kochia before the kochia ever even comes out of the ground. What we're talking about is using one of the yellows, that's Treflan Sonalaner Prowl, plus Metribuzin, that's the old Sencor, plus a PPO, either Valor or Authority. If you use that three-way combination, you'll have 99.9% .9 kochia control, and then it won't be a big issue post-emerge. And if you don't use that three pre-strategy, your best hope is to get 60 to 80% control, even if you do everything yep. right from there on out. Most of the post-emerge choices that we've got will control only about 60% of the kochia if it gets bigger than an inch or maybe two. All right, let's talk about those options in soybeans. Cobra and Cadet are probably probably the best. Some people will use Flexstar. We don't think that's quite as good as the Cobra or Cadet. Either way you go, it's just not going to be very good. Now, granted, if your kochia is not Roundup resistant, you're in luck. Roundup will kill yeah, it. Yeah, or if it wasn't ALS resistant. <laughs> right. Boy, the ALS herbicides used to be awesome on kochia. Yep. However, that ship has long since sailed. All right, let's turn to corn there. It's much, much easier. I really like Verdict down. I like Balance Flex down. I mean, Sure Start and Triple Flex are okay on it, but keep in mind, Triple Flex and Sure Start each have an ALS component in there, the Python, so that's not going to do anything for the kochia. Post-emerge, status is the best product, but Callisto, Laudus, Impact, Armazon are pretty decent, and Buckterol even has some suppression. Turning to wheat, we really like Sharpen Down as a pre-emerge herbicide. As we talked about in the post-harvest burndown segment, Sharpen has got a lot of activity on kochia. It's not going to be perfect when it's all by itself, but it's the best thing we got going pre. Then post-emerge, we've always liked Wide Match because it has starane in it. That's been our lead product. However, there are some cases now being brought up in North Dakota that there may be some starane resistance out there. So we look at other options options, Buctrol is probably our best other option. Well, I would say Husky is a much better option than just straight Buctrol. Husky does contain Buctrol, but it also has a product in there similar to Callisto, Laudus Impact, Armazon. So Husky is the way to go if you're worried about wide match working. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's weed, but Iron Talk is coming up next.